Hi, and welcome to an illustrated guide to recurrent neural networks. I'm Michael, also known as Learn Vector. I'm a machine learning engineer in the natural language processing and voice assistant space. If you are just getting started in machine learning and want to get some intuition behind recurrent neural networks, this video is for you. If you want to get into machine learning, recurrent neural networks are a powerful technique that is important to understand. If you use smartphones or frequently surf the internet, odds are you use applications that leverages RNNs. Recurrent neural networks are used in speech recognition, language translation, stock prediction. It's even used in image recognition to describe the content in pictures. So I know there are many guides on recurrent neural networks, but I want to share illustrations along with an explanation of how I came to understand it. In this video, I'm going to avoid all the math and focus on the intuition behind RNNs instead. By the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of RNNs and hopefully have that light bulb moment. So RNNs are neural networks that are good at modeling sequence data. To understand what that means, let's do a thought experiment. Say you take a still snapshot of a ball moving in time. Let's also say you want to predict the direction that the ball is moving. So with only the information that you see on the screen, how would you do this? Well, you can go ahead and take a guess, but any answer you come up with would be that, a random guess. Without knowledge of where the ball has been, you wouldn't have enough data to predict where it's going. If you record many snapshots of the ball's position in succession, you will have enough information to make a better prediction. So this is a sequence, a particular order in which one thing follows another. With this information, you can now see that the ball is moving to the right. Sequence data comes in many forms. Audio is a natural sequence. You can chop up an audio spectrogram into chunks and feed that into RNNs. Text is another form of sequences. You can break text up into a sequence of characters or sequence of words. Okay, so RNNs are good at processing sequence data for predictions, but how? Well, they do that by having a concept I like to call sequential memory. To get a good intuition behind what sequential memory means, I like to invite you to say the alphabet in your head. Go on, give it a try. That was pretty easy, right? If you were taught the specific sequence, it should come easily to you. Now try saying the alphabet backward. I bet that was much harder. Unless you practice this sequence before, you'll likely have a hard time. Here's a fun one. Start at the letter F. At first, you'll struggle with the first few letters, but then after your brain picks up the pattern, the rest will come naturally. So there's a very logical reason why this can be difficult. You learn the alphabet as a sequence. Sequential memory is a mechanism that makes it easier for your brain to recognize sequence patterns. Alright, so RNNs have this abstract concept of sequential memory, but how the heck does it replicate that concept? Well, let's look at a traditional neural network also known as a feed-forward neural network. It has an input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. How do we get a feed-forward neural network to be able to use previous information to affect later ones? What if we add a loop in the neural network that can pass previous information forward? And that's essentially what a recurrent neural network does. An RNN has a looping mechanism that acts as a highway to allow information to flow from one step to the next. This information is the hidden state, which is a representation of previous inputs. Let's run through an RNN use case to have a better understanding of how this works. Let's say we want to build a chatbot. They're pretty popular nowadays. Let's say the chatbot can classify intentions from the user's inputted text. To tackle this problem, first we're going to encode the sequence of text using an RNN. Then we're going to feed the RNN output into a feedforward neural network, which will classify the intents. Okay, so a user types in, what time is it? To start, we break up the sentence into individual words. RNNs work sequentially, so we feed it one word at a time. The first step is to feed what into the RNN. The RNN encodes what and produces an output. For the next step, we feed the word time in a hidden state from the previous step. Remember that the hidden state represent information from all previous steps. The RNN now has information on both the word what and time. We repeat this process until the final step. You can see by the final step, the RNN has encoded information from all the words in the previous steps. Since the final output was created from the rest of the sequence, we should be able to take the final output and pass it to the feedforward layer to classify an intent. 
For those of you who likes looking at code, here are some Python showcasing the control flow. First, you initialize your network layers and the initial hidden state. The shape and dimensions of the hidden state will be dependent on the shape and dimension of your recurrent neural network. Then you loop through your inputs, pass the word and hidden state into the RNN. The RNN returns the output in a modified hidden state. This modified hidden state should now contain information from all your previous steps. You continue to loop until you're out of words. Last, you pass the output to the feed forward layer and it returns a prediction. And that's it. The control flow of doing a forward pass of a recurrent neural network is a for loop. Okay, now back to our visualization. You may have noticed the odd distribution of colors in the hidden states. This is to illustrate an issue with RNNs known as short-term memory. Short-term memory is caused by the infamous vanishing gradient problem, which is also prevalent in other neural network architectures. So as the RNN processes more steps, it has troubles retaining information from previous steps. As you can see, the information from the word what and time is almost non-existent at the final step. Short-term memory and the vanishing gradient is due to the nature of backpropagation, an algorithm used to train and optimize neural networks. To understand why this is, let's take a look at the effects of backpropagation on a deep feed forward neural network. Training a neural network has three major steps. First, it does a forward pass and makes a prediction. Second, it compares the prediction to the ground truth using a loss function. The loss function outputs an error value, which is an estimate of how badly the network is performing. Last, it uses that error value to do backpropagation, which calculates the gradients for each node in the network. The gradient is a value used to adjust the network's internal weights, allowing the network to learn. The bigger the gradient, the bigger the adjustments and vice versa. Here's where the problem lies. When doing backpropagation, each node in the layer calculates its gradient with respect to the effects of the gradients in the layer before it. So if the adjustments in the layer before it is small, then the adjustments in the current layer will be even smaller. This causes gradients to exponentially shrink as it backpropagates down. The earlier layers fail to do any learning as the internal weights are barely being adjusted due to extremely small gradient. And that's the vanishing gradient problem. Let's see how this applies to recurrent neural networks. You can think of each time step in a recurrent neural network as a layer. To train a recurrent neural network, you use an application of backpropagation called backpropagation through time. The gradient's value will exponentially shrink as it propagates through each time step. Again, the gradient is used to make the adjustments in the neural network's weights, thus allowing it to learn. Small gradients mean small adjustments. This causes the early layers to not learn. Because of the vanishing gradients, the RNN doesn't learn the long range dependencies across time steps. This means that there is a possibility that the word what and time are not considered when trying to predict the user's intention. The network has to make its best guess with is it. That's pretty ambiguous and would be difficult even for a human. So not being able to learn on earlier time steps causes the network to have short term memory. Okay, so RNN suffer from short term memory. So how do we combat that? To mitigate short term memory, two specialized recurrent neural networks were created. One called long short term memory or LSTM for short. The other is gated recurrent units or GRUs. LSTMs and GRUs essentially function just like RNNs, but they're capable of learning long-term dependencies using a mechanism called gates. These gates are different tensor operations that can learn what information to add or remove to the hidden state. Because of this ability, short-term memory is less of an issue for them. To sum this up, RNNs are good for processing sequence data for predictions but suffer from short-term memory. The short-term memory issue for vanilla RNNs doesn't mean to skip them completely and use the more evolved versions like LSTMs or GRUs. RNNs have the benefit of training faster and uses less computational resources. That's because there are less tensor operations to compute. You could use LSTMs or GRUs when you expect to model longer sequences with long-term dependencies. If you're interested in digging deeper, I've added links to the description on amazing resources explaining RNNs and its variants. I had a lot of fun making this video, so let me know in the comments if this is helpful or what you would like to see in the next one. Thanks for watching.